Good morning and welcome back. And first we have two things to show you today and then we get straight into the lathe project. So the first thing to show you is this. This is yet another amazing gift from one of the machining community out there. Hugh, you know who you are. I'm gonna have a look in here, properly unwrap it and see what we've got. Amazing, astonishing and humbling. Huey, thank you so much, sir. I really deeply appreciate this. This is just incredible. I cannot believe it. The love, consideration and kindness of the metal turning and lathe turning and machining community is just breathtaking. It truly is. I've been a motorcyclist all my life and I know all about the love and kindness and brotherhood of the motorcycle community, but this, the machining community, I think you're all, we're all bikers as well. This just takes it to a new level. I absolutely am astonished. The love and amazing support that we've got in the last lathe video from all of you, it was just a gear shifter. I just turned some ridges in it and polished it. But wow, the amazing messages we got from you just blew us both away. If we missed your message, if we didn't reply to you, we're really sorry. It just literally flooded us completely. It was three whole evenings till midnight trying to answer to every single one of you. Thank you so much. And again, Huey, thank you for this. This, uh, if you've not seen this before, I've got two boxes of cutting tools. I've got the insert tips, which are gonna be great fun to get using those to understand them and how they work slightly differently. And I've got the brazed in tip uh, carbide type, which are gonna be a great deal of use in the project to come, especially the project today, because I have something specific to do. And that's gonna really be a, a useful thing because the tips that I've got, they do need a little bit of attention already because I've been putting them through quite a bit of work. The other thing here, this is a quick change tool post that Huey has sent me. It's one that he doesn't need anymore. It needs a small modification to fit my lathe. So that's gonna be something coming up in the future. I really look forward to doing that, but I'm absolutely blown away. Quick change tool post, four tool holders. This was gonna be something, according to all of your amazing advice that I was gonna save up for, put on the Christmas list, and it would be top of that list. But this has given me the opportunity to do it now, to get it reasonably soon and to get using this a lot more conveniently and follow all of your great advice and guidance on how to do that. Again, this has got to have a little modification so it fits that machine. Once I've done that, I'll get using it. So Huey, again, thank you so much, my friend. I'm truly blown away by this, I really am. So I'm gonna put this away very safely. I'm gonna get some of these out because I'm gonna use them today. And then secondly, what's in the big box? After a long, long time putting it off, finally, with all the mess this thing makes, I bought myself a shop vac. Yes, I know, a little bit overdue. Right, okay, I'm gonna get into this as quickly as I possibly can. The shop vac needs no introduction, that's just what it is. That's to vac the shop and make this place tidy. That thing makes more mess than you could possibly believe. So that's been the straw on the camel's back. Finally got a shop back, really happy with that. This is a socket set that I bought for Christmas present for a relative. I've got a nephew who definitely needs something like this. It's Geodor quality, 172 piece socket set. I paid 94 pounds for it. It's amazing value for money and Christmas is coming up. So I thought I'd buy one and I'll show you this shortly coming up on a little tool review, which I haven't done for a long time. It's just be a little short one inserted in between everything else. So come back to that. And this was what I went shopping for the most. Um, again, Recon Electrical got an account with them. So I managed to get all this in one big old massive box. As you saw, a great way to do it. 24 hours delivery, awesome. Fantastic, right, the first thing I bought was, as advised by loads and loads and loads of you, was a silicon carbide grinding wheel for sharpening the lathe tips, the carbide ones. So got one of those definitely, and that's gonna be a great addition. Now because of that, I've gotta finally stop putting the drill in the vise, I know, and get the grinder out and put that on the grinder. So while I'm doing that, I've also got myself a wire mop for the grinder as well. So that was the second thing I got. And the third, which, Really excited about this. Obviously, once that piece of paintwork over there is fully hardened off and I can assemble it on the bike, then I've got to start nailing all the wiring together. And that means I've bought some really 
electrical wiring connectors, really nice ones, properly secure ones, the like of which the factory uses. Not those red and blue squeezy things. Don't really like those up there for kind of radios in your car, Ford Capri or something. I want a proper connector, the kind that already on the bike. So I've bought a packet of those, but you need a specific crimp tool for it. So I went to, again, Recon Electrical, and these are Weha ones. They are a really cool item. Their specific quality is that they have the tips here that will perfectly crimp those perfect little crimps. I'll come back to these and I'll show you when we're using them. There's four different sizes and they'll be able to give me a great wiring loom finish. So when I start wiring all the lights and everything else in the final stage of the build, I'll have the proper tool to fit the crimps in a proper way, the way the factory does. There we go. So that's it. Put that together. I think that's enough chat. Let's spark up the lathe and show you what today's little project is. I'm sure the Scotsman among you out there know what that stands for. Okay, now for lathe project number four, I've got a drawing, a proper technical drawing, and it really is a proper technical drawing, a proper plan, and it's a piece of bar, 38 mil thick, and it's gonna form a spacer. There's gonna be two of them and they form spacers between a handlebar clamp and a top yoke. So they are handlebar risers. That's what they are, proper set of plans. Here we are, proper bar riser, two of. I'm gonna do my best with this to get the specifications absolutely correct. This isn't so much an artistic job like the last video, this is more a technical job and I'm really looking forward to the challenge on this. I've got my drawings. Let's get the caliper out and some stock. Let's get stuck in.
Right, okay, that's the first one done for now. I'm gonna polish the outside of it last. Now, the reason for that is that the specification was 38 mil in diameter. That's 38 mil bar. I thought it was 40, but it's not. It's just the muck on it. Uh, it's 38.24 is the size of it. So what I'm gonna do, I, I guess I could have possibly took a facing cut off that, but where you have to turn it round and do the other side, then I would have took a bite out of it with the jaws and I haven't got any soft jaws yet. So I've left it in its raw form, a little bit oversized, and I'm gonna form a little jig with a bolt and nut and some washers afterwards on both of them, insert it in to see if I can polish the outside of it back to 38 mil. It's only 0.24 of a mil to take off the outside. Anyway, there's the first one. Let's do the other one. Right, there we are. Two bar risers, a pair of bar risers for an Aprilia 30mm. They will lift the bike up by 30mm overall, 32mm overall, but that's the recess underneath that goes over the top yoke. So they, they're a 30mm lift on the bike, which is great, and that's exactly what Andy wanted. That's what he sent me in the specifications. They fit perfectly together, so no movement whatsoever, nice tight joint, so that's absolutely superb. The most important specification was the height. Obviously these are bar risers, they lift the bar clamps off the top yoke to give a bit more of a comfortable rider position. If one of them is higher than the other, even by a millimeter, then you're gonna feel it, because by the time you get out to the end of the handlebars, that's gonna grow to a little bit more than just a mil. It's gonna be probably three or four mil higher, and you'll feel it, it'll be a cockeyed rider position, totally unacceptable and not safe, so they are absolutely perfectly the same height you saw with the ruler. There is no difference between them at all. That's the most important spec. The rest, I've got to within 0 0.2, 0 0.25 of a mil, and I'm happy with that. If Andy's got any problem with them, he can send them back to me and I can make an adjustment if necessary, or make some more. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed that, I truly did. Didn't obviously pass down that, I just polished the outside because it was already 38 mil bar. Didn't wanna make it any smaller because there's a little casting comes off off the yoke, then there's a casting that follows into the bar clamp, and that 38 mil would follow nicely. If I went down below that, you get a little step each end, and it just looks rubbish. Now, I haven't gone to town and polished 
polish these to death. I've just given them a nice shine because the bars or the bar clamps and the top yoke on Andy's bike are a satin silver finish. So what he probably will do is go over the outside of that with a scotch bright, get that lovely scotch bright finish, or maybe even paint them. That's up to him to do. But I've just made a nice smooth finish for him so he can do what he wants with it. There we are. Thank you for watching. Thank you for all your incredible and amazing support with these projects on the lathe. I deeply appreciate it, I truly do. And of course, all your help, advice and guidance. So take it easy, ride safe. I'll see you next time. <laughs>